I'll start with you, Tom Palmer, Tom P. Uh, mm. Where did this idea come? Well, uh, in actual fact, it came, it, it, it came from something that happened to Tom, Tom S. So um, uh, I, I, feel, I feel a bit awkward telling, telling his story, but- You do, um, you do it if you want. want. I want to, let's say, I want, he, I'm... he was at a wedding uh, and he hadn't had much sleep and he became convinced that the best man was about to announce uh, this, this thing to the whole wedding and say that Tom was invited as a joke and wasn't it funny that he came and everyone would turn around and laugh at him. Um, and so he was telling me this experience and we just started talking about how that feeling is sort of so familiar, but how funny it was, to, like the level it got to in his head that he was really thinking that something that dramatic was gonna happen. Um, and that just felt sort of frightening and funny and weird and relatable. And we wanted to sort of chase that feeling. Um, and so, yeah, we just started with this idea of a guy having a birthday with his old friends and, and just seeing if, if that awkwardness and that kind of paranoia could just take us through a, a, a whole feature. Right. And I think what's so interesting about the film is so many films these days, you can predict the ending, like you kind of know where it's going. Whereas in this case, I mean, you have no idea, like what happens in the end and all the twists and turns, like there is no way that you could guess that or, or you're prepared for it within the film. That's great. Yeah. I'm so glad you, you, you thought that. Um, yeah. I mean, we, we went through a lot of different endings and um, we, we didn't know maybe... what the end was going to be either. <laughs> for, for a long time. Probably probably has helped um so yeah so we, yeah we, yeah we, we went through literally kind of 10 or 12 different endings and um and each of those endings that now don't exist they all serve some kind of role in these kind of red herring storylines that are going on and kind of mister misdirecting the audience throughout right and uh, tom s i'm going to go to you uh, obviously you okay. can't give it away but what made you choose this ending over the 11 other endings? We found that all the other endings where they were very specific and they sort of were like, oh, well, Pete did do this thing at university and that's what they're punishing him for. Or, oh, um, you know, it was because Harry is a guy from his past who's out to get him. Um, uh, it, it, it immediately felt like a sort of, um, like the stake suddenly just dropped weirdly it was like it was like revealing the monster sort of um was felt far less dramatically effective than an ending that was much more open-ended and kind of that felt like it you know that this person was going to be trapped in his own head forever that felt like the sort of scariest if we could pull that off that felt like a much scarier more interesting satisfying ending than than as i say sort of just you know pulling the mask off the, the Scooby-Doo villain kind of thing. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and I, and, and I think it was, you know, as I said before, we were really chasing that, that feeling. We really wanted to have an audience sit and meditate in this, like, you know, idea of social paranoia. So it felt fitting to, to leave people with that, <laughs> with that feeling rather than to kind of, like, relieve them of it. Mm. Right. And it also felt like it was an example of gaslighting on an extreme level because we have all felt that where we find someone to be a little bit off, but everyone around us is like, what are you talking about? They're great. But that particular person is, I feel like that was the perfect example of gaslighting, you know, that was shown in the film. Yeah, totally. yeah. And, yeah. And, and, and much like, you know, you sort of worry, you, you then start to worry that you're um being too sensitive and, and you know that wedding story i am being incredibly self-centered in it so i think you know you're sort of like oh am i am i am i talking about gaslighting too much and gaslighting my friends by talking about gaslighting as you know so it was, feels like you get get trapped in a sort of cycle that, that um in your own head yeah totally and it feels like you know because this in this instance of gaslighting it is this white privileged privileged slightly self-indulgent man it just feels like you know the audience can actually like laugh at that because it's such a kind of case of like you know um tables turned um and uh yeah so that's definitely something we're kind of like having fun with just like giving this guy the worst worst possible birthday you could imagine i know it wasn't too fun of a birthday but i mean fun for us as viewers <laughs> but, like it was the best birthday ever for us to watch <laughs> yeah 
great yeah well it's also a very re relatable sort of setup hopefully you know that the, the seeing seeing your friends at this age the early your early 30s it feels like an age where there there, there are kind of um i don't know unspoken pressures that that are lingering that, that add to the act to, to general anxiety you know who's where are you in your career and in your relationships and and um you know reconnecting with people and seeing how how you're at different stages it kind of for some reason that felt like a, a good fertile ground and felt kind of universal right and i think it's um interesting i was actually reading a book the other day uh, that talks about how when you're not comfortable with yourself especially when you're younger you do things that you don't really want to do you know whether it be doing drugs or, or drinking too much but even your character in his 30s, he still is dealing with that, with not being comfortable enough in himself uh, to follow his own instincts and do what he really wants to do because he's afraid of disappointing his friends. Totally. I think authenticity is a, is a theme that we were really interested in. You know, who is more authentically themselves and 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 as much as P wants to be, you know, seen as and, and has been doing kind of morally good things uh in the world and not and not kind of um you know just drinking his dad's whiskey in his dad's house he's 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 actually comes a cropper because he is unable to be authentic and be himself whereas someone a character like archie who's quite quite sort of outwardly obnoxious is is more in touch with his sort of st stupidity and his and, and his kind of uh obnoxiousness and, and and therefore he feels like he's actually more likable oddly right and for you, Tom P, were you um, putting in experiences that you have faced in your life? Because it is super relatable, you know, when people go back to their hometown when they move away and, and you do grow up and, and sometimes people don't progress and they're the same people they are when they were 19. But then for most people, they do grow up. So it's this kind of weird hybrid of when you do see your friends after a long time, uh, you know, you, you do grow apart. So was that something that you faced in your own life or was it just something you added for the storyline? Yeah, I think I think definitely. I mean, you know, more and more like you know those those kind of big um, uh, sort of, of watershed life stage moments. Like you know, I'm married and I've got kids now and stuff. And like you do have those moments where you're like doing your your wedding invitation list or whatever when you're when you're thirty, and and it's quite difficult to to know if you are still friends with those like you know close best friends from from university or whatever because you your memories are so intense from that time and you've you know it's been 10 years um and there definitely is this kind of confusion about sort of reassessing well i'm a different person i guess that person's probably different like what is it that's necessarily keeping us um friends or like you know is the party animal from university actually just someone's just by now just totally gone off the rails like this character Archie you know who who obviously was the joker at uni um that we have in the film and then you know we found it so fun to kind of write what I think everyone knows is is going on underneath those types of people is that you know he's just like he's a lost little boy he's pretty sad he's like very vulnerable he's very confused and we had a lot of fun like writing that kind of breakdown scene so yeah I think a lot of those themes um yeah, uh, are hopefully relevant to, to a lot of people at this at this stage in life. Right. And uh, just before we go, because we've got a couple of minutes left, I'll uh, start with you, Tom S, and then we'll go to you, Tom B. Uh, what is it that you hope that people get from the film when they do watch? Well, as, as, as sort of um, sick as this sounds, we find it really funny. So I hope people uh, like have managed to laugh through the kind of cringeness. I think it, it was, you know, it is a... We want it to feel dark and, and and deal with you know some some sort of some dark dark issues, but it is it is kind of hopefully there are some good laughs in there. So I hope people feel uh, it sounds like a weird phrase. I, I hope they feel very uncomfortable, but also um, enjoy it as a comedy as well, and, and and kind of and it gets them thinking and talking afterwards. Right. What about for you, Tom P? What do you hope that people get? Yeah, from? yeah, definitely. I, I I love the idea of people leaving the cinema and you know having having a, a a heated discussion and debate about like what was really going on there and what is you know what was real and what wasn't because I think those kind of discussions actually end up kind of revealing a lot about yourself and the type of people you are and like what what you're seeing whose side you're taking so yeah I'd love it to be discussed 
and enjoyed and like you know talked about and hopefully for people to tell their friends to see it as well right because you know when it does end it does it is open to interpretation and even afterwards mm. i'm like googling like what really happens and exactly <laughs> you can't find it on google yet because it's yet about to be released to the world so i think that's going to be a cool conversation that everyone's mm. uh, going to have online once you know everyone can watch so great great well yeah we look forward to that Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Tom. Tom, it was a great film. Cool. I, I think it sums up dark comedy. It's that perfect kind of combination of the two. So I'm sure that people will really love it because I loved it. So, so congrats. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you so much, Dan.